Can I get some light here? Hey, Luke. Oh, hi, Josh. I've got a bit of a problem. I've been looking into the news lately and I've been seeing lots of debate on immigration laws and deportations. I have a friend who immigrated here with his family when he was young. He has relatives who live in Mexico who have been trying to immigrate to the U.S. for the past few months. I'm worried that they'll pass a law that makes it hard for people to immigrate here. I don't want so many families to be separated, including my friends. I'm sure the government will make a fair ruling on the issue. But that's just the thing. I don't know much about our government. How do I know that they are going to make a fair ruling? How do I know everything will be okay? Well, we've been learning about our government recently in my social studies class, so I guess I could give you a brief summary about it. The government is split up into three branches. The main one I'm going to talk to you about today is the legislative branch. The legislative branch is split up into two parts, the House of Representatives and the Senate. First, let's talk about the House of Representatives. Can I get a bridge here, please? Thanks. Come on. The House of Representatives has 435 members or representatives. Each state gets a certain number of representatives depending on the population. For example, Wisconsin has a lot less representatives than a state like California, because California has a lot more people living in it. You must be at least 25 years old to be a representative and serve a two-year term. The point of this is so that the House is a lot more responsive to the will of the people. Here we are, at the Senate. The Senate has 100 members or senators. Each state gets two senators who fully represent them. This means equal representation. Senators have to be at least 30 years old to serve and have longer six-year terms. These aspects make it so that the Senate isn't as responsive to the people. Well, the main purpose of this branch is to create the laws that they pass on to the other branches. They are given bills or proposed laws that they all debate on if it should become a law or not. The law then moves on to the judicial branch, which is the second branch of government. The judicial branch, which is mainly focused on the Supreme Court, basically just interprets what the law means and makes sure nothing is unconstitutional, which means against the Constitution. The court has nine justices or judges total, and they each serve life terms. The law is then meant to be upheld by the executive branch, which is the third branch of government. This branch involves the president and is simply about enforcing the current laws. The president, after being elected, serves a four-year term. Once their term is up, another election takes place for a new president. The previous president can still run, but you are only able to be in office for two terms total. These branches all have powers over each other called checks and balances. This way, no one branch can become too powerful. The executive branch checks over the legislative branch in a few ways. The most notable is the veto power. This basically means that if a law is passed, the president can refuse to enforce that law by his own beliefs. The legislative branch can override a veto with a two-third vote, however, which is a check that it has over the executive branch. The president can also call Congress or the two houses into session to vote on something. The main check that the executive branch has over the judicial branch is to grant a pardon. This means that anyone who is convicted of a crime and put in jail can be freed if the president chooses. He can also nominate people to be on the Supreme Court and can refuse to enforce decisions that the court produces. The legislative branch has a few checks over the executive branch, which includes overriding a veto. They can also impeach or take the president out of office and refuse to pass laws. The Senate also has to approve presidential appointments, for example, to the Supreme Court. They have a few different checks over the judicial branch, the first one being where they can impeach or get rid of justices on the Supreme Court.
If the Supreme Court finds a law or action that the legislative branch does unconstitutional, the legislative branch can both try to pass laws to overrule their decisions and can propose amendments or changes to the Constitution. They can also reject nominations of judges to be on the Supreme Court. The judicial branch has one main check over both branches, the power to call certain things unconstitutional. If the judicial branch sees a law that the legislative branch passes out and decides that it doesn't follow the rights given in the Constitution, they can call the law unconstitutional, in which it will no longer be a law and go back to Congress to be changed. In the same way, if the executive branch does an act that doesn't seem fit to the rights of the Constitution, the Supreme Court can call it unconstitutional, which will put a stop to that act. Thank you, Luke, for sharing all this information about the government. Now my mind is at ease and I can rest easy. Thank you so much. Yep, no problem. See you later, Josh.